Jamie Dimon still saying you can't rule out a hard landing. With Nvidia knocking the ball out of the park when it comes down to earnings, we're seeing some interesting things taking place in the market and I wanna break down opportunities that I'm personally seeing here. We're watching companies like Intel fall to the hip side while a company like Nvidia is now skyrocketing. We've seen a company like JP Morgan outperform all banks and a company like SoFi really underperform market activity. And so there's a few dynamics taking place here that I think the market's starting to uncover. And we talk about it a lot on the channel. Now, and if you're new to the channel, welcome in. My name's Colton. We do fundamental analysis on this channel and look for long-term undervalued stocks here. We're gonna be doing a masterclass live stream. So if you've got your calculators, guys, congratulations. I'm gonna try to launch this sometime next week. I don't have a date lined up yet, but there will be a date soon. Now, coming into today, we definitely have some mixed things taking place as yield spike on recent economic data. We have the Dow Jones down roughly a half a percent, S&P pretty much remaining flat, and obviously the NASDAQ leading the way as we talked about Nvidia. This has definitely been a tale of two stories. It's really coming down to one thing specifically. If I were to switch Anthony Noto with Jamie Dimon, meaning now that Jamie Dimon is running SoFi, we would see a substantial outperformance in my opinion. If we think about Jensen Wong switching places with Pat Gelsinger, at Intel, we would have another tail. So this is really coming down to execution of management. And this is something we've talked about on the channel about you kind of have to bet on management, especially if the fundamentals look pretty strong. You might need to reach a little bit more because if you have the right management in place, you're always gonna be ahead of the competitors. And this is clear as day when we look at what's going on in the market. Now, one of my largest holdings and definitely got a lot of flack for buying the stock around $25, $26. People thought it was dead money, but seems like Pfizer is coming back to life here. Now looking to save over $1.5 billion by 2027 with a cost cutting program. And along with that, it looks like their vaccines might ignite once again. Now, this is not taking into consideration that they also have the CGen acquisition that's in their pipeline. And so there's going to be tremendous opportunities five plus years out. Now, over the last five years, Pfizer has definitely been a massive underperformer, but we're starting to see that maybe it's found a bottom. And I think the fundamentals are saying that it basically has found a bottom as well. Because over the last month, the stock is up 15%. And not only is that the case, but if you would have bought at those levels, you would have had over a 6% dividend yield on Pfizer. We're seeing a pretty strong pullback on Pfizer today. So I do want to point this out as it's down roughly 2% on the day, but it's bumping into a major moving average and it's had a heck of a run in a short period of time. So some people taking profits makes a tremendous amount of sense right now, especially with money now wanting to flock to technology. I still love these plays here. I think there's plenty of room still left in a company like Pfizer. And I think anything under $29 makes a lot of sense here. Now, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I just want to show you guys something here. Companies like Palantir were trading for right around a $50 billion market cap and are going to be pushing over $2.5 billion in revenue. And when we compare that to a Snowflake also trading right around a $50 billion market cap, once again, doing right around $3 billion of revenue, here is what's fascinating. Cisco now trading around 15 times earnings, and I believe forward earnings is going to be sitting right around 14 times with a $188 billion market cap and paying over a 3% dividend, acquired Splunk recently, who's projected to do $4.22 billion of top line revenue for Cisco Systems now. But you're still getting the cybersecurity and you're getting this asset of Splunk for free when you buy Cisco Systems. And this is why I've been making Cisco Systems one of my largest positions, because I'm worried about the downside risk of a lot of these cybersecurity companies. But I'm technically buying them by buying Cisco Systems. With Cisco Systems relationships now acquiring Splunk, I'm essentially getting $50 billion of risk-free equity on the other side of things here. When we compare them to a company like Palantir and a company like Snowflake, I definitely think Splunk's in the conversation. Hey, maybe it's not as good as Palantir and Snowflake, but it's actually doing more revenue. So there is an argument that it could be, and I'm essentially getting a dividend to wait for this to play out and that's why i can't stop buying cisco systems as i said earlier we do do fundamental analysis on this channel and that's our go-to first and foremost then we talk about management and we talk about total addressable market and other opportunities that the market could be overlooking here the first thing that we scratch on the surface is going to be the true numbers of the company before we get into any stories any contracts that could be lingering out there anything about management we first dive into the numbers and that's the first step so with a company like Cisco Systems, I do believe they are going to get reaccelerated growth here. 
I think anywhere between $44 to $45 is fair value for the company. And if you get anything cheaper than this, I do think you're getting a pretty substantial bargain here long term. In the short term, one to two years, I don't know what's going to happen here. But longer term, I think there's multiple tailwinds for this company. And I think there's going to be substantial revenue growth that I'm personally overlooking, but I always err on caution on this channel. When I look at Pfizer, Pfizer is well ahead of schedule to what I personally thought they were going to do. I thought this could be, I thought this could go as low as $20, $24 a share, but I was willing to reach a little bit on the stock because of what was possibly in their pipeline. And also we have to remember how important this company was during the pandemic. They were arguably the most important company when we were in our worst time. And so from it going nearly from it going down from a $50 stock down to a $25 stock, yes, I'm going to reach a little bit above $24 a share, even though that's where I think it probably could have went. But now they're talking about reacceleration of revenue growth, growing margins. That's why I'm saying I think anything under $28, $29 is pretty good bargain here long term for Pfizer, especially reinvesting over a five and a half percent dividend yield. When we think about historical market returns giving you right around nine, 10 percent and you bought Pfizer in the low 20s, you were getting over a 6.5% yield at one point in time, I believe. You're basically getting a market return just on the dividend yield and getting anything that comes from CGen for free. So I've been really watching these mergers and acquisitions in play, and I've really been all about them because there's so much talk about AI and so much talk about technology that some of these other legacy companies have been getting stupid cheap, even though they've been making great acquisitions in my opinion. And another one that's extremely boring, we're gonna talk about Smuckers. Smuckers is getting ready to report earnings. Now you're probably asking yourself, what makes Smuckers so important and where is the opportunity? Well, they just acquired Hostess, but that's not what I'm excited about. Smuckers has a tremendous portfolio when it comes down to coffee. They have a huge market share on coffee with Cafe Bustelo, Duncan Brands, and Folgers. What is so important about coffee? Well, what did we learn about Starbucks? Something is definitely going on with the consumer. And with Smuckers now reporting earnings soon, I do think they're going to disappoint because of inflation problems. But I do think that this is what we're looking for when we talk about revenue growth on the company. The acquisition of Hostess is going to add top line revenue growth. But I also think the demand for at home coffee is going to be higher than we've seen in a very long time. You can essentially get two months worth of coffee for one Frappuccino at your local Starbucks. And I do think we're going to see this opportunity take place. And even if it's not taking place, this is this company is still fairly cheap when we look at the fundamentals. Now, of course, I would wait until earnings to get a clearer picture on some things. And that actually might be the stock that we break down live. When we look at the chart, it gives me that same kind of feeling that Pfizer gave me, where it was kind of left for dead. And then all of a sudden, it went up 15, 16% out of nowhere. <laughs> and you can compound nearly a 6% dividend yield. Now with Smuckers, the dividend yield's probably sitting closer to 4% after a sell-off, sitting at 3.79%, trading for right around 11 times forward earnings, which is pretty cheap. And buying this at the right price, you're gonna get a dividend compounder. This is a company that's raised its dividend for 23 years and paid that dividend for 23 years. So buying this at the right price could absolutely pay dividends, no pun intended. So in a market where it's high flyers and a lot of AI talk, I'm still finding these little gems here that really could be good additions to your portfolio, whether you're looking for some stability, whether you're just looking for good deals, or whether you're just looking to add some yield into your portfolio. These types of companies are really presenting some great opportunities. So if you like this kind of analysis, consider subscribing and we will see you in the next one.